Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. Ask the Father is glorified. The two actually often go hand in hand. That what you ask for affects, or I should say different, what you ask for can determine who's being glorified in your life. Remember Solomon in 2 Chronicles chapter 1 was at Bilboa and Benjamin, I think that was in those days, in the, there where the tribe of Benjamin was, and there was the tabernacle of Moses. And he went to this place, uh, Gibeon, not Bilboa, <laughs> Gibeon. There we go. I kind of felt, hey, I'm saying the wrong thing, Gibeon. And that was placed there in Ephraim, not in Benjamin, Ephraim. And that's where the tabernacle of Moses was. And he went to go and brought a thousand sacrifices. You'll read about this in Second Chronicles chapter 1. And then the Lord appeared to him and said, Ask, what do you want? said the Lord to him. And Solomon said, Lord, you have made me king instead of my father David who walked before you and was pleasing to you. But I am like a child. He was 25 years old. I don't know how to go in or how to go out before the people. Grant me wisdom how I must be an example and how I must make decisions to bring the righteous judgments before the people. Please, Lord, give me wisdom to know what to do. And the Father, the Almighty God, was so impressed. He says, because you've asked for me wisdom, how to judge my people and be a good example to them and have not asked for riches or the life or long life or the life of your enemies, I will give what you've asked and there will be no one who are before you as, as king who will have your kind of wisdom or after you, except Jesus, of course. And then he says, he says, and I will also give you all these other things. And the point of this here is that the father was glorified in what Solomon asked. It's that God received glory throughout the whole world because his, the, the fame of his wisdom spread throughout the whole world. And God would have us into such a place that what we begin to ask are things maybe that we haven't even naturally thought of but they come out of our union with the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you begin to ask for things in your union with Jesus that you would not know how to ask without that union? It's because you're in union with Jesus that you know how to ask this. It is through your relationship with him that you know how to do this. And Jesus says here in John 15 verse 7 and, and verse 8 of John 15, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit so that you will be my disciples. You see, God wants us to be in such a place that we begin to ask. It says in the book of James, you have, have not because you've asked not. Jesus said, ask and you will receive. Knock and it shall be opened. Seek and you will find. You see, that God would have us ask for things today. What is it that you would want? And you may say, I don't know. I don't know anymore what to ask for. Maybe you just go into a place of prayer with your Lord Jesus. And you begin to talk to him about how wonderful he is to you and how much he means to you and all that he's done for you throughout your life. And as you all of a sudden become aware of his blessed presence, for he's always with you, he puts in your spirit something to ask for that you hadn't thought of, but you only think about it because you are one with him. I really believe this, that God would have us in such a place. I have experienced this so many times in my life. I was preaching many years ago in Ethiopia, in the city of Hosanna. And there were, was at that meeting, there was a meeting for leaders, and there was about 11,000 people there sitting around. And I was standing on our canopy, and it was, it was very hot. It was about 41 degrees Celsius, and there was a blue, blue skies. 
and, and the people were hiding behind pieces of papers from the sun because it was so piercing. I'm standing on a canopy and I'm preaching and the Holy Spirit just increased, increased, increased in its manifestation in me as I kept talking about Jesus. And suddenly in my consciousness of Jesus, I stopped preaching and I said, I see you're very hot. I'm gonna ask the Father to put a cloud in front of the sky, in front of the sun and cool you down with fresh wind. And a few minutes later, the cloud was there and the cool wind came and that afternoon it began to rain. And what I didn't know is that they had a drought. They had a drought. And that was no small sign and wonder that the Lord Jesus gave, that he was there for them, that when he showed up, the drought ended. And you see, this is what I'm trying to show you. David in Psalm 109, verse 26 and 27. Let's, let's look it up. Oh, I love this, this specific um, Psalm. Well, especially those verses because the Lord gave them to me in 1978 and uh, 109, 109, sorry. Here, verse six, help me, O Lord my God, O oh, save me according to your mercy, that they may know that this is your hand, that you, Lord, have done it. Right? Again, that they may know that this is your hand, that you, Lord, have done it. You see, God would have you in such a place with him. You know, he knows, and others can see that this is his doing. Even the asking was his doing. The fulfillment, the response to the asking is his doing. Can the Lord bring me in such a place, Pastor, that I would ask? And maybe you have asked in your own feelings and thoughts and you've been faithful, but now all of a sudden his presence manifests and you ask again and it happens. Is one maybe not as important as the other. It reminds me of Evan Roberts. I heard this story once about this phenomenal revivalist in Wales in, in 1912, I think, 1913, right there, I think in those days. I'm not exactly sure of the year, but it was around those years. And he worked in the coal mines and when he was evangelizing the work coal miners, he took a big lump of coal and with his big hammer, he hit that piece of coal and hit it 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 and hit it. And suddenly that piece of coal would splinter in all kinds of pieces. And he would say, which blow splintered the coal? And all of them looked and thought, oh, I don't know. He said, every blow. And you see, that's why I think it is what Jesus teaches us here in Luke chapter 7, I believe it is. Um, or is it chapter 8? Uh, where Jesus is talking to us that we should never cease to give up asking. Um, I think it is Luke chapter 8. I haven't read this for a little while. Um, uh, it's the story about the unjust judge, and you know this story of the unjust judge. And this woman, Jesus is giving this story, he says, never cease to ask the Father. Don't give up believing. Don't give up believing that what you ask, he will respond to. Because he said there was this unjust judge and this widow came to him for justice, but he didn't care about God and he didn't care about her but she would not cease to come before him and to keep asking and him becoming afraid of her persistent said, even though I don't fear God and I don't fear man, I will do what she asks because she won't cease to ask. You see, often the persistent is the one who wins and the Lord does seek that persistent faith in you and me that will not cease to ask. And what is the most important thing 
is that we believe that the Father will receive great glory. It's kind of what David said in one of his Psalms. He said, Lord, saving me will bring great glory to your name because I'll tell everybody what you've done. I will not hide it. I will let everybody know that you forgive sin. Psalm 71, he talks about this. And one of the verses that, that I've prayed and that I love deeply is right here in John chapter 8, verse 50 and verse 54 in the Amplified, where Jesus said, I am not in search of honor for myself. I do not seek and I do not aim for my own glory. There's one who looks after that and he seeks my glory. He is the judge. If I were to glorify, magnify, praise and honor myself, I would have no real glory for my glory would be nothing and worthless. My honor must come to me from my Father. It is my Father who glorifies me, extols, magnifies and praises me of whom you say that he is your God. You see, this is what I think is so key right now for you and me to see breakthroughs in our lives. That we say, Father, I ask this for the glory of your name. Father, I ask for you to do this for the praise of your name. Like David said, Lord, save me, but do it so everybody can see it so that you receive the glory and the honor for what's happening in my life. Let's believe God. It's no different than Hannah in the book of Samuel chapter 1, who was married to Elkanah. And Hannah lived in a not easy situation. Her husband loved her, but her husband had another wife and, and see really gave Hannah a lot of pain, especially when they would go to the temple to pray, making her feel inferior and mocking her that Hannah was barren and she had the children. And then Hannah was in such pain, such pain that she just didn't have any children. And she cried and she said, Lord, I ask you, give me a son and I will give him to you that he may serve you all the days of his life. And she, she asked, for what would give God glory. And God instantly responded. And she was the mother of Samuel, who became the great transformer of God's people, Israel, out of which also, out of whom's anointing also David was able to come. And God did this for her. And he blessed her afterwards with five children of her, uh, of her own, plus, so she had Samuel, plus another five children. And you know, God wants to do miracles for you. So let's today begin to ask for what glorifies God. And let's believe God that what we ask him for will bring him glory. And let's see God turn the tide for our lives in this hour. Amen. Have a good day.